What happens when you're able to escape God's view while he teleports everyone to another world for special training, but you're stuck by yourself for a thousand years? Well, you get an angel and can become incredibly strong. Welcome to today's recap of Everyone Else is a Returnee. If you want an angel as well, destroy the like button, turn on the notifications, and comment down below. We really look forward to your feedback. Our story begins with Yu Ilhan standing in front of his campus, surprised how there was no one there. He was walking through empty hallways questioning if he's the only person in this school. He waited for a bus driver that never came, so he decided to walk home and take a nap. Maybe it was all just a dream. When he got home, he went into the house and called his mom, but she wasn't there. So he looked at the clock and it was 2.45, the same time he left for school. He checked the time on his phone and it showed 2.45 as well. He should have been gone for two hours at least, but the sun hasn't moved either. It looked like everything around him stopped except for him. Then he heard a woman's voice behind him say, yes, that's right. Ilhan turned around and saw an angel. Earth time has stopped right now except for you, she explained. He asked her who she was and the woman responded that she is exactly what she appears to be. He asked her if she was a home intruder. She jumped in surprise and defended herself that she isn't and that she has two wings and a white dress. How can it not be obvious? Not connecting the two, his next guess was cosplay. She gave up and introduced herself as God's emissary, an angel named Lita. Lita came to visit him to tell him he was left behind. Ilhan's mind replays all the time and there was a lot he was left behind. First, an elementary school's field trip where he was forgotten and left behind by himself. Then the training retreat in middle school, math field trip in high school, and even for university membership training, one night for clubs and stuff in UNI. Falling desperately to his knees, doomed that he was left behind again. The angel, smiling, told him that all humans were sent to another dimension, except for him, because the Earth will be going through a great cataclysm. Lita proceeds to explain to him what that is. The great cataclysm is that Eon's Earth is leveling up to the next stage because it has reached the maximum number of experience points. So for high-ranking individuals, mana will be released and archaic record will make contact with Earth, and the humans can get a sense of that record that they shall call status. It was like a game. Once mana is released on Earth, monsters will also appear, and they cannot be killed with simple guns and swords and bombs. That's how strong they are. So if mankind isn't helped in some sort of way, they will be at risk of being annihilated by the monsters. That's why God Almighty stopped the time axis on Earth and sent all the humans to another world so they could have time to train and adapt to the mana. To be precise, their real bodies are kept safe and they are sent into another world in avatars to learn to use mana, so they'll have at least a bare minimum to go against these monsters. Ilhan asked if monsters can be killed with guns and big explosions, but monsters formed by high-ranking energy wouldn't even die from a nuclear missile, and that's why there's a need to strengthen humans. God is so merciful that he arranged for all of mankind to learn mana. So what about him? Why was Ilhan left behind yet again? Lita tells him that there's been a mistake. He angrily asks her to fix the mistake. She explains that the dimensional portal has already been closed, so that will be difficult. His stealth skill, that even God couldn't recognize, is really amazing. He screamed angrily how a god that stupid exists and threw himself on the floor in a hyper-tantrum, saying to send him to another world to learn mana. She tells him that God took pity on him since he was left behind and decided to give him a bonus. Ilhan was still unhappy, screaming that he didn't need it. He wants to learn mana too. She tries to calm him down saying that will be difficult until the great cataclysm happens and it will be 10 years until mankind comes back. But she'll take care of his meals. He just needs to wait. For 10 years? What is he supposed to do all by himself? Angel suggested that he can train his body for the upcoming great cataclysm. He was confused because he still wouldn't be able to use mana. She said with a big positive smile, that he just needs to be physically strong. He wasn't happy with that, so he cried to just send him away too. Lita said no, impossible. So his lonely life on Earth began. It's been five years since humans disappeared from Earth. During that time, Ilhan worked hard at the gym, while other people were building up their mana and developing powers to resist the monsters in another dimension. But all he could do was work on his physical strength. Lita, the angel, asked him if he wasn't bored doing the same exact thing every day for five years. 
It's not like I have a choice, he replied. He has to do it, so he does it. Over time, his muscles have developed a lot together with his strength. He gained a strong physique. Lita was admiring his patience, since usually it's not easy for people to focus this hard on just one thing. She told him that he is no ordinary person and that she already knew that since he avoided the eyes of the god with his stealth techniques, but he interrupted her and defended himself, asking her if she is saying that it's his fault. She laughed. Lita was the only person on earth he could talk to, so she came to visit him once a week, and she was also preparing his meals. When it was time to eat, his table was automatically filled with food that tasted better than his mom's cooking. Even the dishes were done automatically. Pretty handy. Ilhan was talking to Lita that now that he's built up his basic fitness, he's considering learning martial arts or how to use weapons. She was wondering how he would be able to do that since there is no one there to teach him. He told her that he can teach himself with the help of the internet. Electricity and the internet both worked, so he was using the uploaded videos that were made in the past. He asked Lita how come the internet is still working and hasn't failed already, and she reminded him that time has only stopped. He was annoyed and asked when she would stop answering all his questions with that. Ilhan was training with a stick outside. Lita reminded him to pay good attention to the basic movements too, and that he has five years left anyways. Four years of studying martial arts passed just like that. Lita offers him to spar with her since he would improve faster if he has an opponent. He was surprised that she was asking him to hit her. She replied casually not to worry about it and attack her. Even if she says that, since she is his angel Nuna, of course he will attack her. He attacked, saying, feel the power of nine years of loneliness and resentment. But Lita was a star of potential born for fighting and with one hit she blew him in the sky with ease. She mocked him, saying, do you get it now? Don't worry about it and use me as a sparring partner. Major bleeding comes for free, she smiled at him. He said he doesn't want to attack her again and to give him a chance to refuse. But she answered by saying, let's go again. His scream was heard in the distance. And so the promised 10 years all went by. Lita told him that with that level of material arts, Lita told him that with that level of martial arts, he should be able to defeat low-level monsters without a problem. And if he levels up, he will be able to use mana, since she taught him herself. It's evidence of his skill, she said proudly. He asked if it isn't more accurate to say that she beat him up herself. She changed the topic and told him that he has done a great job in these 10 years. And now that the great cataclysm will come, a lot of things will change. He asked her if he would be able to meet her again. She said that it depends on him. It's not long until the great cataclysm will begin and people will start to come back. It's been so long since Ilhan had seen people that he was a little nervous. It's a shame that he had to say goodbye to Lita, but finally he can go back to his usual life. Lita was flying away, but was surprised when she turned back. Nothing was happening. She went back to him. He was understandably angry that no one was appearing. She gave him a shy smile and said, it seems like there's been some kind of mistake. Again, he throws himself on the ground, screaming out of his lungs, the F-bomb, he hates her. And now the axis of time has gone off. Does he need to wait another 10 or 20 years now? If that's all it takes, he'll wait until the end. Time went by 10 years, 20 years, even 50 years, and people did not return. He grew a lot stronger in that time, strong enough that his blows could crumble rocks, and he stopped counting the passing time. Lita asked him, and he answered that he no longer remembered his mother's face. That cut deep and she felt sorry for him. He asked how far off is the axis of time. He's bored of martial arts now. Lita tried to calm him down by saying that the great cataclysm could start at any moment and he shouldn't neglect his martial arts and training. She worried if Ilhan had fallen into despair. He has been basically alone for 60 years now. He brushed it off saying he'll keep training while he reads good books too. His answer gives her hope and she encourages him by saying that's a good idea. After that, he reads books all day long. First, modern novels, then business books, general knowledge, history, geography, physics, chemistry, art. And so, he ended up reading all the books in the library. He decided to learn other languages and began to travel the world, starting with China, followed by Russia, America, and so on. And he learned several languages and read all the books in the world. A very long time went by. Lita told him in the library that this was the last book. She asked what would he do. 
What is it with him? Why doesn't he get tired? He answered that he has no time to be tired. There are so many things for him to do before this great cataclysm. You, Ilhan, even after several hundred years alone, still believed that people would come back. Everything was in preparation for the great cataclysm. Lita was praying to the Lord to please let the humans return before Ilhan will reach his limit, before he gets tired and gives up on life. Ilhan hunts and successfully kills a wild boar in the forest. After reading every book in the world, he started learning butchery and blacksmithing. He asked Lita if he kills every animal now, won't it prevent the monsters from appearing? She said he can kill anything she will allow him, but if he kills all the animals, the equilibrium of the natural world will be destroyed. She continued to explain what monsters actually are, but quickly covered her mouth with her hands. He was surprised and asked her why she stopped talking. Is she just baiting him right now? She told him that he should just pretend that he didn't hear that. He brushed it off and said that in any case, he needs to learn butchering skills. Lita was amused by him. How interesting he is. He's able to find new things to do without fail. It's been 274 years since he was left behind, and that's a long time, even for angels. So it's shocking that a human, who can't even live for a century, can devote himself to preparing for the future this entire time. She thought about what an incredible person Yu Ilhan was as he successfully butchered a boar. His final goal for butchery was a sperm whale. Lita was angry, saying that sperm whales are an endangered species and therefore prohibited from hunting. He asked her if she could let it go just this time, as he was standing on the beach next to a sperm whale. After mastering butchery, he took up blacksmithing, but it wasn't as easy as it seemed. He was making a sword, but wasn't happy with the result. Lita took it from his hand and joked that she couldn't even slice a radish with that sword. Ilhan wanted the sword back, but Lita said she will take the sword as a commemorative item. Since he didn't disappear, even after the world reset, he should thank the gods for that as she flew in the air with a sword. He screamed after her, why are you always trying to annoy me? Ilhan continued to train outside and Lita was thinking to herself how he's progressing. He's experiencing several generations worth of progress in a single body. But it's already been a thousand years since he fell behind, and as a human, he'll reach his limit sooner or later. And when that happens, what will he do? She was thinking that maybe if he could experience something new, it would be nice, something that he hasn't done before. It would have to be something like opposite sex relationship. She blushed on her own thoughts. Angry as to how she could think such vulgar things, she is an angel after all. But her mission is to help Ilhan. This is just following God's orders, she persuaded herself. If Ilhan needs to experience it, then she'll do what she can. Ilhan noticed her weird behavior, so he asked her what she was doing up there by herself. He had to ask twice to get her attention. She came to him and with a smile like nothing's wrong, asked him what's wrong, questioning herself how she could bring that topic up. But then her sword started glowing blue and moving in her holster. It flew up in the air and Lita went after it. She could not afford to lose it as it was the first sword that Ilhan made. As Ilhan called after her, he noticed he was suddenly in his old clothes. Everything around him started returning to the day that Earth stopped. As Lita prayed to her god to keep the sword, she noticed that the great cataclysm had arrived. Ilhan was propelled into the sky and the two saw each other for the last time, regretting this is how they part ways. Ilhan hopes that if he can become a higher being, he would get to see Lita again. People magically start appearing all over the world. In front of Ilhan appears a status window with his name and all other skills information, so he figures that the day of the Great Cataclysm is finally here. As he walked outside, he heard people talking about status windows and that they came back in only 10 years. It seems like he has been the only one who has fallen behind for one thousand years. Then he heard people complaining that all their stats have been reverted back to the original. All those people around him seemed to not react to him as they weren't able to see him. He noticed his active skill, stealth. He's guessing if it could be because of his stealth that no one notices him. He tries to turn off passive stealth, but it's not working. He starts getting frustrated as he can't turn it off. He is fated. He feels like he is born to be separated from others. He gave up and didn't care anymore, so he decided to go back home. But even though nobody can see him, he's happy to hear and see other people on the street. He comes home and a female voice screams his name. It's his mother. They both get very excited to see one another. His mother, whose face he could not remember anymore, was there, and all the memories came flooding back as soon as he saw her. After 1,000 years, he finally sees a sunset, smells the dinner being cooked, the sizzling sound from the frying pan, and his dad reading the newspaper on the dining room table. 
everything seems back to normal. Dad complained that there's no news on Hysia, and Mom asked if he was on Hysia since she was at the place known as Yamen with other ladies in the neighborhood. Dad says that Hysia was perfect except there was no rice there. Mother shared how she couldn't figure out how to use mana because it's hard, and Ilhan felt down because he was unable to participate in their conversation. Mother turns to him excitedly asking him where he was. He was sweating and decided not to tell them the truth since it will make them worry. He said he was in a place with no name. Dad continued to complain how hard it was to learn to use mana. Ilhan joined in saying that they had to do that otherwise the balance of the world would be off. They looked at him confused and he was reminded he told them something he shouldn't. So he said that's what he thinks, trying to not blow his cover, otherwise he'll raise suspicion. Luckily, it worked. Mother asked him how it was for him, which made him uncomfortable. She continued excitedly explaining how she heard if you are good at mana you can be rich. It said that monster corpses are worth a lot of money. Dad explained that people who utilized mana are rare so they'll be definitely be able to earn more. Ilhan felt so weird hearing his parents talk like they are gamers in a fantasy game. He put his chopsticks down and got up and told his parents he can't use mana. His mother, smiling, said that he can just focus on studying. Dad was blaming bad genes since he's unable to use it well. They took the news way too easy, thought Ilhan. He decides it doesn't matter enough for now as he is just happy that everything's back to normal. When he came to the room, there was a red spear which really surprised him. It was his ultimate masterpiece he created throughout many years of perfecting his blacksmith skill. He thought it would disappear when the world reset. Lita did try to prevent it from disappearing and maybe that's why it didn't. So he decided to use that to fight monsters instead of searching for new weapons. The status window for the spear appeared. It read on it that it's a miracle that was made by a human without using mana and so strong and sturdy one would easily believe it was made of the bone of an intermediate monster. There were also attack power and durability but he was unsure if the number was big or small. He sat next to the computer excited to collect new information. After reading all the books, it was refreshing to see new posts and texts. People who have returned have already started uploading all the new information they learned. He started learning how strong you have to be and what monsters you can fight. A normal person could fight up to level 5 monsters. One generally needs to be around level 7 to be chosen as lowest ranked soldier in other worlds. Starting from level 10, one can gain classes like Swordsman, Archer, and others. And when they reach level 50, they're considered strong and proceed with second class advancement. Third class advancement is possible at level 100. From that point onwards, one would be considered a precious resource of the country. But due to hellish conditions required to level up to third class advancement, there are no reports of fourth class advancement. But many conjectures say that a high-ranking monster like a dragon or a Bahamut would be in the fourth or fifth class. He gathers all the information he could so far. He plans to ask more around at school the next day. He felt like normal life wasn't affected as much as the world was. He said that he misses Lita. A voice said Lita will be glad to hear what he just said. Ilhan freaked out and turned around, saying who was that? The voice said from the other side that it has been dispatched by Havens to help him learn to use mana. He turned around and saw an angel with black hair. She introduced herself as Eartha. He was stunned. Once again, an intruder appeared in his life. He encountered a second angel. Eartha, sitting on books as she was very small, explained to him that it's very difficult to manage mana, so that's why God made her into an avatar and sent her to a different world for 10 years to train in mana, and that's why she's here, to help Ilhan. There was someone requesting that he get additional help, and it's unfair for him only to be left behind. That someone requested for an angel to help him learn mana in a short amount of time. Ilhan knew instantly that this was Lita, and he smiled. Then why didn't Lita herself come to help him? Eartha explained that higher-ups were worried an angel and human would become too close, so she was chosen instead. But she noticed that Ilhan is very strong and could defeat low-ranking monsters just with fists, so why was she even needed? Lita was saying that he needs to be taken care of and was lonely for a thousand years, and feels bad for him, and didn't mention that he was very physically strong. She deceived them. 
but Eartha had no choice, since she already received the mission. She told him she is the support, so he can use mana with ease. Simply having her by his side activates mana in him since she is a higher being than him. Just by her being here, his mana cognition, control, and application speed will be ten times faster. Back then, when mana didn't exist on Earth, this wasn't possible, even if Lita was by his side. But since the Great Cataclysm, things have changed. He should master mana with her help in about a year, by her calculations. She was sitting on Ilhan's head, and he asked her if she was going to stay there. She responded that a spell had been cast to prevent lower beings from seeing her, so he doesn't have to worry. But he didn't like her sitting on his head. She followed him everywhere. Ilhan was annoyed, saying that she should let him go to the toilet and shower alone, and he won't be able to watch his impressive, definitely high-definition 1.7 terabytes of treasure videos. Eartha said that she doesn't care what he, as a lower being, does, so he has nothing to worry about. She doesn't care if he break dances, does Zumba, or plays DDR, but he cares. So they continued the argument. He said he misses Lita, and Eartha fought back, saying she needs to deal with him for a year, so he needs to deal with it. And just like that, his life of living together with a small invader for a year began. Ilhan was on his way to school for the first time in 1,000 years. Everything was back to normal, except for a little angel sitting on his head. He asked Eartha again if she would really stay on his head. She brushed him off, saying no one else can see her. He told her to stop swinging her legs, and they fought again until he noticed a military man running behind him and stopping next to the fence. The government prepared the military for monsters that may appear in the future, so not everything was back to normal. He thought to himself that Lita said you can't defeat high-ranking monsters with anything other than mana, so the military probably won't be effective. As he was sitting in school, he felt as invisible as the other day, so he tried turning off stealth again, and it didn't work. Eartha noticed the skill and said it's not a bad skill. Ilhan was surprised by her comment that he thought it's a loser skill and not good. She reminded him she didn't say it's good, just not bad. She asked him if he made the skill, but he was confused on what she was talking about. She explained that skills are combining tiny bits of mana and pathetic battle experience to process something to use against an attack. For her, as a higher being, even if she combined all of the skills of these people, it would be less than his stealth, and that's what she meant by saying it's not a bad skill. But Ilhan still felt like that's not the skill he wanted. But it was easy to eavesdrop on other conversations thanks to this skill. Even though this is not what he wants to use it for, it's a good chance to gather information. Someone mentioned an empress asking who she was, and it caught Ilhan's attention. Apparently, the Empress, who was famous in Landparth for 10 years, was from their university, but no one knows who she is, and they might find out when the first monsters appear. Ilhan assumed there was a person from his university that had outstanding talents and got the nickname Empress. Others were questioning when dungeons will appear, and that they will have level restrictions. Ilhan asked Eartha what dungeons are, and she responded that it's a trap that God has created. First, he sets up food to lure in monsters, and then blocks the exit so they can't get out. But humans can enter freely and go if they meet the specific level requirements. It creates a space where humans can safely hunt monsters. Ilhan asked why they don't just keep them there forever since they can't live anyway. Eartha explained that the dungeon keeps monsters only for a certain amount of time so humans can get rid of them or they run free. But there are also monsters that are too smart to be trapped and ones that are stronger than the barrier and even those who create dungeons and disguise themselves. She advises him to never let his guard down. The teacher walked into the room and told everyone to sit down and he'll call attendance. After that, the teacher gave them a long off-topic lecture. They will have to adapt to changes in society. The UN already brought up banning free use of mana and regulations on leveling up. China and other strong nations are focusing on monsters and environments that will change as a result of mana. Ilhan was bored and thought that the ability to use mana will have the most meaning and going to university is becoming meaningless unless they will start to train mana. Eartha said that the most efficient way to train mana is to fight monsters, like she, like she just read his mind. He jumped, saying he doesn't want to do anything dangerous. She responded that they are still in the beginning of the Great Cataclysm, so monsters are weak, so he needs to hunt many weak monsters, so he can boost his experience points and level up to train mana. And since he has a very good physique, he will have no problem defeating monsters up to level 25, and that gives him hope. Suddenly, everyone gasped looking out the window. Looks like the first monsters have arrived. All the students were looking out the window at big insect-like monsters. Eartha said that it looks like the trial has ended 
and now mankind has to survive by themselves. All the students started panicking, and after the first person who tried to fight and died, they all started to run. Ilhan was left alone in the room once again. Ertha asked him if he plans to fight them. He responded that they look weaker than a sperm whale, so he plans to attack. Ertha told him that monsters are different from animals. Their outer skin is abnormally strong and physical abilities are different. However, they don't seem to be over level 20, so it won't be too difficult. Ilhan went to the wooden chair and broke one of the legs off and swung it in the air, saying it's fine for a weapon because he can swing it well. Ertha once again admired his muscles and balance. He should be able to defeat that monster easily. He took some other things from the room and managed to make a pretty good weapon. Ertha was impressed that he made such a good weapon in that short amount of time, and Ilhan smiled, saying he was getting bored, so he started learning craftsmanship. Ertha remembers how Lita was crying that Yu Ilhan is small and cute and doesn't know how to do anything, so pitiful for him to be left alone. She really wasn't telling the truth, she figured. He achieved quite a lot for a low-ranking human. He turned to Ertha, asking if he'll be noticed since he'll make a scene. Will stealth hide him? He wants to conceal himself. She suggested that wearing a mask should be just fine. He defeated a monster that looked like a big praying mantis. He gained 800 experience points and reached level 3 for stamina, increased mana stats for 2, and strength and agility stats increased by 3. He also obtained the record of a level 13 big mantis and taijutsu has reached max level, and he is now able to evolve this skill if he possesses the materials. Level is a system where Akashic records and linked organisms from this world will be able to obtain new strength. By claiming your opponent's life, you can take his records and future potential. He was happy that he finally gained mana, even if it's just a little bit. More big fly monsters appeared behind him, and he attacked, saying he never learned how to fight against a group, but Ertha advised him to just use his body. He defeated them and was happy to have gained even more skills and experience, but Ertha said not to relax just yet, looking the other way. Big mosquito monsters attacked him from above, but after killing one, another tried to stab him with its proboscis, but it broke. Ilhan's body had been trained to extremes, and his skin was now really hard, figured Ertha. Ilhan was fighting them, but suddenly monster reinforcements started to come, and he was surrounded by them. He didn't stop killing them and gained more experience for each one killed. Suddenly, the monsters around him vanished in the air. On the opposite side, there was a female figure with a mask on, using magic to defeat them. He was surprised by her, but Ertha told him to focus and kill the monsters quickly. While he fought, Ertha commented that the amount of mana that another person has is unreal for her to continuously use lightning attack. It's insane. He asked her if she's also leveling up like him, and so they did manage to kill the monsters. All the students watching out the window were impressed. Suddenly, a military man came marching through the door, apologizing that they were late and were surprised to see what was in front of them hundreds of monsters already taken care of. Ilhan was investigating the bodies of monsters because if he dismembered the monster corpses, he might obtain a mana stone. He needs to remove the mana stone from the hardest part of the exoskeleton, and mana have gathered the most. His butchering skills came in handy, and Ertha helped him by showing him the right part. Others were just watching him, amused. He found the stone. Ertha told him to store it well. It's a core material for all artifacts. He turned around and there were many people filming him with their smartphones. He felt embarrassed, but his identity was still hidden. He was approached by the female that helped him fight the monster. She asked him if he can help her with slaughtering, and that was the first time Ilhan and the Empress met. The Empress asked Ilhan to help her with slaughtering. He asked her how much he's getting if he helps her. She offered 40%, which he accepted enthusiastically. People were talking and admiring them. Everyone knew about the Empress, but nobody knew who he was or what weapon he was using. He slaughtered another body, revealing purple stone he gave to the Empress. Before he was able to leave, a military lieutenant told him that they had something to ask him and he should cooperate, but was shocked by the Empress's lightning. People were impressed by how protective she is, and some also wanted to get struck. Ilhan decided he should go before it gets even more chaotic. But Ertha told him he's got nothing to worry about because suddenly people don't see him anymore. They were confused about where he had gone. They thought that he must have run away faster than they could see, so he must be like Usain Bolt. He was sad that no one could see him anymore, even though it was what he wanted. 
Later in the day, Ilhan was in a park trying to make armor for himself with Eartha by his side. It would be tricky, but at least he should be able to make some wrist and knee guards from monster body parts he collected. Eartha told him that it would be very difficult and would be better if he finds a master and he makes it for him. He laughed, saying he's the truest master on Earth. So she remembers Lita saying he can't do anything and strangles her in her mind. As she was watching Ilhan looking at parts, she asked him if he knew anything about mana craft. He didn't know anything, but he was very interested and wanted to know more, and really wanted to learn it. She explained to him that mana craft utilizes mana crystals, which are similar to magic stones, to create artifacts that can grant special powers to things like armor and weapons. It's a concept that was developed from blacksmithing. He grabbed her, begging her to teach him. She gets angry and demands for him to let her go since she already said she'll teach him. At that moment, she was even more angry at Lita because she had to deal with Ilhan. Bertha continued explaining that in order to start mana craft, you first need to prepare materials and magic stones to create an armor or mana crystals with similar properties to the stones, for example, something like a dragon heart. You place the magic stone next to you and synchronize as you create gear. After finishing the product, grind the magic stone finely and rub it over the surface of the gear. That is the basic form or close that will simply elevate the gear's performance. But above that, there is mana crafting that can grant additional special abilities as well or the applied form. But that form is a bit more difficult and he wouldn't be able to do it with his current mana level. Ilhan wanted to know how to do that anyway, so she continued to explain. In order to grant your gear special abilities, a master must handle mana. It wouldn't be impossible to do it if you were to consume magic stones quickly. If you consume mana or magic stones like that, you may create gear of your dreams. It could spout fire or ice or have the effect of recovering stamina. The will of the master is important when it comes to determining what ability will be granted, since the quality of the magic stones and the master's mana will be very helpful. Ilhan started to work on his armor parts and after a while he successfully made them, even without skills. He learned mana craft. Bertha was impressed by his skills and how quickly he understood the concept. He had a magic stone left and decided to use it straight away. Bertha couldn't believe that he was going to attempt a granting immediately and thought it was reckless. He was struggling, so Eartha decided to give him a bit of her mana, since it would be a waste if he gives up now. He looked amusingly at the crystals in his hand. Eartha was looking at Ilhan, wondering if he was successful at granting. Did they fail? Ilhan smiled and told her, no, they hadn't failed. It went just as he planned. He leveled up in mana craft. Eartha was surprised, looking at his new creation. He applied the Mantis's knife ability to his wrist protector. He smiled, saying that things will be busy now. She replied affirmatively, and that it's impressive what he's accomplished. He'll be busy crafting. He replied, it's not that he'll be busy with that, but he'll be busy running away since he broke the swing. The next day, on the news, were reports that the government is searching for two masked people who defeated the monsters. Ilhan was on the way to school, but his mother asked him to just stay at home because she was worried. The news continued talking that the government has called people with extraordinary abilities overpowered ability users and that their mana-using abilities are high. Eartha noticed the mother's status window. She had a mother's skill, which is the ability to keep an eye on her children around the house and worry about them. So naturally, she was worried about her son going outside where the monsters are. He responded by saying if he sees a monster, he'll just run away. The news continues saying that the government plans to create a unit of advanced mana users with overpowered at the head of it. With a little more convincing, Ilhan's mother finally lets him leave for school. On the way, Ilhan and Eartha were talking about his mother's skill and if it's even useful. Eartha told him it's a good survival skill. For example, penguins live in a big group and a mother can hear her child's cry and rush to protect him. They changed the subject to the government plan on creating a unit. He said he's not interested in working with the government and that family comes first. Also, it's more comfortable to move around when you're less tied down. But he does wish to meet Empress again. Eartha asked him if he's into her. He responded that he hasn't thought about that stuff in a while. So she started to mock him for being sterile. 
he got so angry that he screamed out loud that he isn't sterile. But luckily, nobody noticed because of his skill. That didn't help with his mood, but he said he might figure out what is the reason for his skill. Bertha, intrigued, takes the bait. Lita is the reason. Bertha was unimpressed, mocking him that he spent a thousand years with an angel beauty, and now normal women just don't do it for him anymore. He tells her to knock it off, changing the topic to the Empress. The ability of hers to use mana was intriguing. He can't use mana even if his level goes up, but her powers are incredible. But Eartha reminded him that what he accomplished without mana is more incredible. She suddenly stopped and said she felt the presence of a pack of monsters nearby. A pack of 70 or so wolves and wild dogs being led by a level 35 diamond wolf. He freaked out when he thought she said that from the beginning, there won't be any high-level monsters. But she did, though it was strange that yesterday, level 10 monsters appeared already. He asked her why she was calm yesterday. She looked at him and said because she didn't want to reveal her worries to a lower being. He remembers Lita and how different she was to Eartha. Eartha is more like a stuck-up rich girl, and Lita was more like an older sister. Eartha coughed to get his attention back and told him that Earth is not normal at the moment and she'll need his help. Eartha just told Ilhan that Earth is not quite normal at the moment. He's confused. She went on his head and said she'll explain on the way since they are in a rush and she'll lead them to the monsters. God teleported all the humans to learn mana but left all the animals on Earth thinking they'll be fine for 10 years, but because of unknown errors, the flow on Earth was greatly destroyed. In other words, ten years turned into a thousand years on Earth. Ilhan remembered how he spent them with Lita, and he didn't even realize it was a thousand years. Even though time was reset, the animals who were supposed to only live for ten years survived for a thousand years and went under drastic change. So, to sum it up, the monsters on Earth are stronger than the ones in other worlds. And that's why Heaven needs Ilhan's help. They want him to be the main exterminator of the monsters while they work on restoring the balance. Of course, they will reward him accordingly. They arrived at the wolves, and Ilhan put on his mask and took his spear out. While he attacked the monsters, he said that the task is very tough and troublesome to take up, but that's why he likes it. For every monster he killed, he gained more experience and skills. People around were in panic as more monsters appeared. One wolf was just about to attack a man, but Ilhan saved him just in time. People noticed him and praised him and called him Sun Gain Bolt. He was not really impressed with the nickname he got, but he kept on fighting and noticed he wasn't leveling up. A message that if he doesn't choose a class, he can't become level 10 appeared in front of him. One of the wolves howled in the sky and more wolves appeared. It looked like the howling gave them some kind of command. Ilhan was surrounded by them. If he took a step back, he would lose his balance, and if he went forward, they would bite him, so he attacked, since that was his only option at that moment. People were impressed how he took down five wolves in an instant. Suddenly, one of the wolves puts his paw over a man, pushing him on the ground face down. It was holding him hostage. Eartha observed that it seems like a wolf has done it before already. But Ilhan smiled and said that won't change anything. People were watching the scene in front of them, wondering what would happen. Will he save the man? The wolf was still keeping that man as a hostage, and Ilhan was in defense pose in front of him. Eartha said that his next decisions will either make him a hero or a villain. He said he doesn't give a stinky poo about that stuff and attacked the wolf, cutting its head off by throwing his weapon. He said if there's a person he can save, he'll do it. But he'll only do as much as he can. He's no hero, he's just a person. Other wolves gathered around him. Bertha said it looked like they'll all attack Ilhan at once, thinking he lost because now he's got no weapon. Ilhan called them arrogant little dogs and stretched his hands. As wolves attacked, he fought back with just his fists. That's the result of thousands of years of training under the Queen of Combat, Lita. Eartha thought to herself that he won't do something as rash as sacrificing his life to save others, but makes judgments faster and calmer than others to take the most efficient action possible in the moment. Lita really did raise an amazing monster, but this isn't something Lita thought of him. He trained himself towards that. 
People around watching the fight were impressed by how strong he was. After a while, he finally defeated all the monsters and he thought it was over, but someone put a gun to his head. It was a military man telling him to stay still. People were furious as to why they were aiming at him. He's a hero. Blonde woman lieutenant was shocked that he defeated them all. When? Later, when all the panic settled, she apologized to him. They read the situation wrong because they thought there were still monsters left. But they were actually looking for him. The army wanted to ask for his cooperation, but before she could finish her sentence, she was interrupted by another military man pointing out that he had disappeared. They saw him again at the corpses he had decided to butcher. The blonde lieutenant walked up to him again and asked him to consider joining them. He said no. She didn't stop convincing and asking him why not. He thought to himself, no, because he feels like things will get too annoying if he does join them. Eartha agreed as she read his mind. But then he told the lieutenant that it's better to not be affiliated with the military. And he's much better and more efficient on his own anyway. Ilhan went back to butchering, but after a few minutes he looked around and realized there was too much stuff there to take back all alone, so he went to the lieutenant that was really down because of his rejection. She got excited thinking he changed his mind, but he asked her if they wanted to buy the wild dog carcasses from him. He will butcher them and sell them, thinking that's better than taking all of that home. She agreed, offering him mana stones, but he wanted money. She was impressed by his skills, separating all the useful parts and how little damage they had. She took a video of Ilhan working and sent it to someone. That person called her and ordered her to bring him no matter what, even if she had to seduce him. After he was done, he went back to the lieutenant and let her know he'll take the cash. She agreed and told him she'll inform the higher-ups. Ilhan turns and is happy with his loot and that it's finally over. He looked at brown little mana stones in his hand, thinking to eat them. Eartha stopped him, telling him it'll cause rage. Do you really want to be dominated by monsters, Mana, she asked him. That just made him feel like someone will definitely do that and cause chaos. He was checking the 37 million that the military paid him. The lieutenant definitely tried to seduce him as she was giving him the suitcase, but he turned and disappeared using his stealth skill after he lost their attention for a second. Lieutenant was bumped. She lost him and her looks didn't work. But Ilhan's long day has just begun. Eartha and Ilhan were behind a building. He was about to choose his first class, but there were too many, so he asked Eartha what she would recommend. She looks at the status window and recommends him a lancer, since he can use a spear or a grappler since his skills are mostly for close combat and with a spear. Ilhan remembers that those are things Lita recommended to him when they were training and that the reason why he is so good is because he was fighting with her. An opportunity to learn from an angel is rare. Bertha said there's no need to think so much about his class. When he levels up, he will obtain second and third subclasses. He never heard any of that because nothing he read on the internet mentions them. Bertha, annoyed, told him that the internet is a waste of his time. He got the feeling that she had a previously bad experience with the internet, and she pleaded the fifth. Ilhan decided to choose a lancer because the destruction power depends on the weapon and a better weapon has better effects than if he would choose to be a grappler. Also, he'll be able to create a much better spear after he finds more materials. Bertha was impressed that he figured that out by himself. Suddenly, a new choice appeared on his status window a choice to be a blurred lancer. Eartha was surprised that he got a modification this soon at his first class choice. That's a unique job just for one person. With all his past experiences and records he obtained, put together to create a new class just for him and him only. Eartha enthusiastically insisted if not ordered, he needs to choose it no matter what. It has higher requirements for leveling up, but it's still worth it. All of his new skills showed on his status window, and one of them was that he cannot manage mana, and could not learn active skills. He understood the name, and he thought he was choosing Blood Lancer since Blurred and Blood are spelled the same with the Korean alphabet. 
Now he understood the chosen blurred Lancer that means unable to see or be seen clearly or hazy. He was definitely not happy about that. But he was swept off his feet with blue light and his body gained more muscles. Eartha explained that his body has straightened because he earned his first class and there's no way back. New status window with basic skills popped up. Eartha asked him if he had any active skills. He didn't. She said most first classes don't, so it's okay, and that she thinks he won't earn mana even when he gets second class. Ilhan freaked out, since being without any mana is pretty dangerous. Eartha confirmed, but that applies for a normal person, so he doesn't have to worry. If he doesn't earn an active skill with first or second job change, the records will pile up, and he'll be very strong at his third job change. Bertha thought to herself that Ilhan is indeed a lower being worth watching over, and smiled, then told him to go on and pull his hair. He was not happy about her pulling his hair. She also told him she hid his case of money with magic so no one would take it. Time to start looking for monsters as the proxy. They started to look for monsters in their area. Bertha told him that the quest from heaven is that he has to have more work done than other proxies, and as a result, his rewards will be bigger. He liked that and will try his best. He looked at his phone where he got information on where monsters appear. There was a sighting of a big bear monster. He joked that today's meal is a bear bladder taking his spear out. If he had poison resistance, Eartha sneaked in a sly comment. As Ilhan stood there, he had to be careful to not get hit by falling stones, a consequence of the government's attack. In the distance, there were military men shooting with guns, but it did nothing to the bear. They were so confused on what to do, the bear got bored and walked the other way. Ilhan put on his mask, but was still standing on the same spot saying he was timing it, but now he'll attack. Stealth really did come in handy this time, because the bear could only sense him when he made contact. As the big bear is considered a class 2 monster, one strike wasn't enough, so Ilhan turned to the military and told them to run if they wanted to live, but they could stay if they wanted. The bear made a swing with his claw near the people and they started to run away in panic. Ilhan attacked it again, and in pain, the bear lost him, so his stealth skill activated again. Because of his class, his next attack should kick an extra punch. He remembered something Lita told him when they were training. She told him to focus all his weight on a single point, and as he attacked her in a flashback, she knocked him out cold, but when he came to his senses, she told him, for the first time, he did come close to her, because he managed to cut her hair. She was proud of him. For the first time, he did succeed a little in a fight with an angel. So he decided to use the same attack with the bear. He focused and put all his weight on one point at the bear's head and stabbed him with a spear. He successfully deleted him and gained a lot of experience and some new skills. It's scavenging time. Ilhan noticed that the bear got smaller, but that was because the bear had a gigantify skill and the skill undid itself after it died. As he was focusing on the bear corpse, a black car rushed up and the doors opened quickly, people saying they arrive and where's the monster. Ilhan wasn't impressed by the people arriving late. People told the young man that came out of the car that the monster was already dead. One of them looked at the bear and noticed Ilhan's mask. The company approached him and asked him a lot of questions since they were impressed that he defeated the monster alone. Ilhan wasn't responding to what made one of the men angry, but the other man talked him down. Ilhan didn't want to talk since he hated small Talk. The company turned to the military man and asked them if they needed help with anything else. Military man answered that they got more calls and if they could help. Naturally, they accepted since that's their job. Ilhan was kind of jealous of his skill at talking to new people. Suddenly, he approached him and introduced himself as Do Yujun and offered him a hand. Ilhan didn't shake his hand, so Do Yujun continued saying to see how he handled the bear. He doesn't think he'll be able to catch up to him during the first quest, but he will for sure pass him up, so he better remember 
remember his name. Ilhan turned to him and asked him what he would do when he passed him. He was first surprised and then smiled nicely. In a word of levels, it's easy to tell who is the strongest and one day he'll be higher than anyone else. Ilhan thought to himself, that's a really boring reason. So he asked him if he needed a rival. Yu Jun was taken by surprise. Ilhan continued, if he really needs someone to compare himself to in order to grow, what is the point of becoming stronger for the sole point of becoming better than someone else? He doesn't have the guts. If he really wants to grow stronger, do it quietly and by yourself. Why do you want to stress other people out? If you want to become better than anyone else, he should think about becoming the best version of himself. Or at least, that's what he wanted to say. Do Yu Jun was already gone before he could say anything. After a while, he got the bear leather that was pretty good. He was approached by a nice military man who wanted to tell him something. He told him about an app that will allow him to see where monsters are. Ilhan asked him if it's okay for him to share this top secret with him. He responded that it's for the sake of other citizens and will benefit all. Ilhan left after that. Another soldier asked the lieutenant if it's okay to let him go so easily if they shouldn't force him to cooperate. He responded that the person with his abilities is not going to listen to them. He is sure he will grow stronger, and if they try to contain him, it might just backfire on them. The world is no longer bound by the same rules, so it's better to coexist and help each other. Smart reasoning. On the other side, Eartha saw the same point. If the military would try to contain him, he might destroy all the military just to not follow the rules. But Ilhan thought they all overestimated him, even though Eartha said he might underestimate himself. Ilhan noticed there are three more monsters close by that just appeared. What should they do? Eartha said, what's the point of worrying? Let's just defeat all three, smiling at Ilhan. He smiled back and said, perfect, let's do this. After deleting all three monsters, Ilhan was bummed that he went up only one level. But the monsters were weaker than the previous monster, and because of his class one, needs more experience to level up. But at least he got a lot of money selling items. He now has 10 million in cash. He wanted to buy a house, but Eartha told him he'll make himself easily traceable, and it'll reveal his cover. He should just listen to her, so just this time she'll erase the memory of officers so he has nothing to worry about. He excitedly said that magic from angels is the best. The next morning he got a special status window saying that the broken connection with the other world has been restored. From now on he can physically go to the other world. Ilhan is summoned to complete quests to receive proper compensation. He became worried that maybe he'll get summoned someplace where he'll be all alone again. Ilhan showed the message he received to Eartha and asked her what the meaning of it was. She said that the monsters on Earth were getting too strong, so she looked around at some things. That's when she wanted to send him to the other world to make it safer for people to gain experience. Ilhan was angry about that. Other people can go there, but he can't do that. He's gonna be left alone again. What will he tell his mother? Eartha told him it's not quite possible for him to go to the other world if he becomes a greater being. He can go to the other world and also the heavens. He'll be on the same level as angels. He thought about how he'd be able to see Lita again. Eartha thought to herself that those two look like they are in a long distance relationship. He would do that. In the living room, the TV was on and the reporter announced urgent news. Starting from that day, the emergency state of martial law has been declared all through the country. Ilhan's parents explained that all over the world, schools and companies should shut down so the military could hunt down the monsters. Ilhan looked at his parents and told them they should go to the other world. Father asked him what the point was, as he couldn't even reach second class change in 10 years. Ilhan explained that more monsters will appear on Earth and the other world world will be safer. He understood and told him to see him soon, and not to give up and immediately teleported to the other world. His mother was obviously shocked at how tactless this was. She continued to put food on the table and told her son that she has different thoughts than his dad. Even though doing his best is great, he should take care of himself. Ilhan started eating and told her that food is delicious and of course he will take care of himself. Mother told him she knows he's the masked man. He was shocked, she knew. She recognized him the first time she saw him on the news. She isn't sure how he got that strong, but she is still worried for him like any mother would be. Be careful about monsters, but also evil people. They're scarier than monsters, she said, scolding him. After that, she took off as well, wishing him to be careful before she left. Eartha came to him while he was doing the dishes to tell him she's going to heavens to get more quests. He told her to bring ice cream and waved at her. Last night, he bought a storage unit with his money, so that's his new workshop. He needed to take care of the bones and leather so they don't go bad. Hardening leather takes too long, and at this rate, Ilhan is unsure how long it will really take him to finish creating his equipment. You can take care of that with magic, said Eartha behind him. He turned to ask her if she was already back and if she brought ice cream, but was shocked because she was a proper size. She told him to give her his hand and she has to give him a reward. Status screens appear saying he completed the quest and got
got awards. One of the rewards was the Eternal Flame. He asked her what that was, but Eartha showed the other side where the flame was with her cute googly eyes. It was a flame that would grow and never go out. Precious flame of the heavens. An everlasting flame that's alive? That's just what he needed. Eartha told him Lita gave it to him. His eyes turned big hearing her name. Eartha said Lita was worried about him and thought to herself that couples should go to hell. She also told him the news that the heavens gave him another quest since he can't go to the other world. As of now, he'll be creating a dungeon on Earth. Ilhan was understandably confused and said he thinks he can't do it, but he can make some ramen and offers it to her. She insisted that he should be helping create dungeons and he figured it's her quest but wants him to help. That made him angry and said that half of the things she told him were not true and what's the point of believing what she says? Eartha said it was God who stopped time on Earth and all the beings were influenced by his power, gaining resistance to his strength and resulting in reactions that don't normally happen in dungeons. Ilhan developed skills for the past millennium, so they're like godlike, and he should help build a dungeon. He was suspicious why Eartha was complimenting him all of a sudden. It was out of her character. She's making him do something hard, but she said it's a win-win as he'll get rewards. Also, if he doesn't help, monsters will have nowhere to go and humanity will suffer as a result. She showed him a full bag of materials used by higher beings. Arcanium, Pessinum, and El Hazra. Alongside some tools she brought, he got excited, but the tools were basic, everyday tools, so he was confused. Eartha told him they need him to make a magic tool to attract monsters. It transforms the surrounding area and becomes a dungeon and gives him the blueprints for it. By looking at it, he knew it won't be easy, but it got him excited. He started working on it using his eternal flame. Eartha started questioning if she should have told him to choose blacksmithing instead of Lancer. He might have been able to create weapons that will challenge the power of the gods. He finished making a little cube as a basic shape. And now to the next step, hoping he doesn't make a mistake. Eartha said if he makes a mistake, he can start over. No biggie. He really focused on craving that cube. Eartha looked at him and finally understood how Lita must have felt and why she likes him so much. It was finished. His blacksmithing skills went to the max and gained the title of Creator of Legends. Eartha was impressed how quickly he did it. She asked him in shock if he completed it already. He said it's been five hours, so it wasn't that quick. She didn't believe he did it in only five hours, so he threw it in her hand and told her to check it herself. It was perfect. It was time to use mana crafting, and Eartha will call her fellow angels to help. Will Lita be among them? Ilhan asked hopefully. She blatantly crushed his hopes. Answering the call were three beautiful angels. They started commenting that it's unbelievable that a human made this device in such a short time. Eartha stopped the conversation and told them to hurry up since they don't have time to lose. Let's start. They started mana crafting right away. They told Ilhan that he just needs to focus on having the will to complete the Trap of Destruction and set up, and they will take care of everything else. The angels put one hand on Ilhan's shoulders and magic shot through Ilhan's body. He felt intense pressure, like he was being pressed down by mana from all directions. He focused on the mission and tried to ignore all those powers pressing upon him. He thought about what would be an attractive thing for animals that endured loneliness for a thousand years, something that would comfort that loneliness. Angels were impressed by Ilhan's ability to endure such power since most people would faint just seeing an angel. He sure was fascinating to them. The trap was set and the status window appeared that he completed it. Angels couldn't believe he successfully did it in one try, and that it even has alpha and beta options. Eartha explained to Ilhan that those are additional options that are attached to the end product of Manacraft. That's what the words clandestine and Earth are. It will appear randomly based on the look, the material, and the ability of the artisan. It's super rare to see alpha and beta options for first crafted items. Angels told him he's incredible and they went to set the dungeon. They flew him out and Earth looked like the apocalypse had happened, which isn't that far off. After some time, they found a good place to set it on. It looked like a nice country road. Eartha threw the dice in the air and it disappeared. All the monsters started focusing on the distance where the trap was and rushed there. Angels couldn't deny that he's talented at making traps. As Ilhan watched animals rushing to the trap, he thought about how God's power is overwhelming. He's able to send all the humans into different worlds in an instant and render monsters helpless with his omnipotent power. In the end, humans are only dancing at the palm of God. And he was just left behind because of one error. 
Only, thanks to Lita, he didn't go insane, but Lita isn't with him right now, so he wants to become stronger, so no one will be able to control him as they wish. He wants to become stronger for the sake of his own freedom. Ertha and Ilhan were on the couch listening to the news about the dungeons and how monsters had entered it. As Ilhan was wondering when his parents would come back, Ertha commented that the dungeons look like they're functioning with no problem. He complained that she told him he needs to make 27 more. And why did Angels already go back since he would be able to resume work right away? She told him that traps take a lot of mana and Angels need two days to recover. But they aren't the only Angels, are they? For example, there's also Lita. But Angels aren't so free as they have their own tasks to complete and Lita won't have time to come. Anyway, he decided to go back to the workshop. At the workshop, Ertha looked at bones and leather on the table and told him since yesterday went so well, she'll give him a present. She used magic to dry and serialize the monster leather in an instant. He was impressed and decided to make gloves and boots with it. He completed them perfectly, and now he will make armor out of bear leather. Ilhan worked on it for a day without sleeping, and he completed it. Finally, he had armor. He strengthened it with bones and added an additional function into his armor. It has hidden retractable thorns that pop out if it takes damage. His armor also had alpha and beta options. And from leftover bones he decided he'll make a knife for butchery since a spear isn't so handy for that. From wolf bones he made a skull mask and now he has a new mask. He tried his armor and everything fit perfectly. Mask even added points to his invisibility. Suddenly, they heard a noise coming from outside. It sounded like a fight with the monsters. They heard a scream announcing that a second-class large monster appeared. They were surprised that there's a monster not trapped in the dungeon. Ilhan hoped it would be a weaker monster than a bear as he had just made the armor, and if the monster was stronger, he'd have to make another one. Before they went out, he just fixed his spear a little, increasing its power. When they arrived at the scene, there was the military, and others who had class, already fighting a big leopard that was stronger than a bear. The monster was strong and everyone struggled. He put his new mask on. He would risk his life to protect others, but if he needed to work a little harder to save lives, he could do that much. And then he joined the fray. Military hit the leopard straight in the face with a tank shot. It did nothing except draw its attention. It picked it up like a toy. Ilhan used the element of surprise to attack it, managing to score a critical hit. When people saw him, they were happy and believed they were saved. Military attacked the monster with guns, and as Ilhan was jumping, he noticed two soldiers in the tank. Leopard attacked before and saved them as they were trapped. They were very grateful to Sun Gain Bolt. Ilhan told them to run as the attention of the monster was on him again. He figured that the monster is smart and goes for the biggest threat. But he wasn't worried and got in a position to fight. The leopard went straight for Ilhan and ignored all the pesky attacks from the military. Suddenly, it was hit by blue lightning straight in the eye. Everyone looked in the sky, and in a helicopter there was a pretty blue-haired woman. It was the Empress without a mask. Leopard attacked Ilhan and everyone got worried because he disappeared, even the Empress. But as they saw blood dripping down, they looked up and he was lodged into the leopard's forehead with his spiked armor. It started shaking its head and ran into a wall with its head forward to get rid of him. Ilhan jumped just before the hit and attacked right after and kept on attacking. The military joined the fight and also people with ordinary tools. Even though they would have been unsuccessful, but because there were so many of them, they did manage to topple the monster. Ertha warned Ilhan to end it quickly as he was standing on top of the monster because it's on the verge of evolving into a class 3. Suddenly, red tentacles started growing out of the head of the leopard. Its upper body started to mutate really fast. It caught Ilhan off guard, but he knows he needs to figure out something soon. He saw the Empress in the sky and she shouted that she can't kill the monsters with her attacks because the level difference is too high. The monster kept on regenerating. Ilhan thought that he needed to deal enough damage to stop it from regenerating. Empress shouted at him that she can buff him with her magic, but after she won't have any mana left, so he must be certain he can defeat it. He said to just buff him already. 
She jumped down from the helicopter and landed next to him. In order to buff, she needs to have physical contact, and since it will drain all her mana, her life will be in his hands. The Empress told Ilhan that if they can't kill it, they will use missiles, and that will cause a lot more damage. He can't let that happen. His workshop is in that area. He attacked the leopard with the help of the Empress's magic and managed to kill it before it had evolved. The Empress asked him if the leopard was really dead. She couldn't know as she didn't get any experience even though she helped. There is also a party system in play. It was his first time hearing of the party option, as he's a destined, doomed loner. The monster's body started to fall and Ertha saved Ilhan from being squashed by the corpse. As he got on the corpse, people started cheering for him, but he wasn't happy. Ertha was confused as to why and he pointed at the wounds on the body, crying that the leather's all messed up and he won't be able to make armor out of all that. What a looter. Soldiers were questioning what's the best way to break a corpse apart. Ilhan went to them saying to let him do it, after all, that's his specialty. He turned to the Empress, charmed by her beauty, asking her what's the best way to divide it. She said he gets 60%, she gets 20%, and the other 20% goes to the others. He went straight for the mana stone that's worth 60%, so he took that and everything else is for everyone else. But people started complaining since they all wanted to upgrade and they fought with their lives, so it isn't fair for him to get it. Ilhan proposed another agreement. He remembered what his mother taught him. That solving thing is not as easy as you might think, so why bother arguing when you have perfectly good fists? He said he will give a mana stone to whoever throws it back into the monster. He doesn't care how they take it, but if this isn't fair, fair, no one is safe. People realized they can't compete with him, so they gave up. As he went to grab it, the Empress approached him saying if he can butcher her share, she will give him 40% of it, giving him more leather than bones. He accepted and told her she should get a car for the items. She took a phone call and other people approached him to see if he could do the same for them. He was not amused. People were buttering him up and giving him compliments to butcher their share too. Just after they made a scene that's not fair, he gets the mana stone. So he told them he will do it for 50% of their share. They started complaining that it's unfair that the Empress gets it for 40% and it's 50% for them, so he simply turned around. They quickly changed their minds and accepted the offer. Ilhan butchered everything until finally he went home. People behind him were arguing who should take what. As he was leaving, the Empress stopped him. She said his stealth is amazing and she wouldn't even notice him even if she were focusing on him. She offered to form a party as she thinks they would be perfect partners. He disagreed. She calmly accepted the rejection and told him she plans to stay on Earth since she isn't that weak. She believes he is the same, so they will probably meet more often. Before going her way, she gave him her business card if he ever needed to contact her. Her name was Kang Mirei. He liked that she wasn't persistent, but wasn't planning on contacting her. The two went home. Ilhan made four more dungeon cubes. Ertha was wondering why tertiary class monsters were already about to form. Something wasn't right. He didn't get it. Why was she frustrated at that? She screamed at him. Why are you so relaxed? That's his world problem. Doesn't he realize what a big problem that is in a world of only a few people with primary titles? The balance was way off even if people are training in other world. The monster's evolution is too fast. He said there's no point to be worried since he can't do anything about it right now. How are other countries handling it? But only Korea is getting tertiary class monsters. He figured that the trap must be the problem if it's only happening in Korea. Bertha gasped. The trap of destruction strengthened the monsters? It could have been the trigger. The monsters might have gone into berserk mode and awakened from the threat they felt from it. In other worlds, the monsters were trapped before they could feel any kind of vigilance. That's why most monster evolution happens in dungeons. Through countless crossbreeds in dungeons, new and more dangerous monsters appeared, which then devour each other. Evolution in dungeons occurs very rarely, but if they are trapped in the dungeons, then they'll evolve by eating humans instead of monsters. Monsters don't really fight each other often, that's why their growth is stunned when inside the dungeon. 
She told him they needed to make more dungeons as he tossed another stone into the flame to make another one. She asked him if he's having fun making new things, but he responded that he likes doing things mostly for experience. She thought that Ilhan was in an unchanging world for a thousand years or so, getting new experience must be very exciting to him. So she encouraged him to become stronger so he can get even more experience. One night the angels returned with recovered mana so they completed the trap of destruction with mana craft. Then the angels left to create the dungeons. As he watched them fly away, Eartha calmed him down that even if stronger monsters appeared, it wouldn't be his fault. He stretched and went home to rest. After taking a shower, Ilhan asked Eartha if he bulked up. She, without looking up from the TV, told him if he hasn't figured out yet that he evolves with every level. He was very proud of his stronger appearance, and after messing with Eartha for a bit, he went to sleep. She had some thoughts about how amazing he actually is and remembered that Lita asked her if she thinks he's amazing too, right? Smiling, she blushed and was angry at those thoughts. In the other room, Ilhan was dreaming about his Lita. He woke up to the status window saying he reached rest level max skill. Eartha was surprised as that is an SSS rank skill. When did he learn it? He thought she was joking that an SSS skill is resting, but she seriously said that she hasn't even learned that yet. He told her that every day for the past hundred years he researched how he can sleep most comfortably. Eartha was shocked by his effort into researching sleep. That made her feel down, but genuinely amazed. He asked, what's that skill even for? She responded to sleep and rested well. He accused her of lying that couldn't be it since she made such a scene about it. She decided it's about time she explains to him the skill evolution. Skill evolution is a kind of achievement-like skill obtaining and it has similar rules to title change. It offers new paths according to the user's experiences. It's like a pathway of Akashic Records. The skills he has have satisfied the requirements for evolution are Taijutsu, Spear Arts, Rest and Health. Butchering and Blacksmith don't have further levels. He already maxed them. Stealth is a skill he can't control actively, so minus that, Taijutsu and Spear Arts have evolution requirements too hard for him at this level. And that's why she didn't bring up skill evolution until now. But sleep skill is different. He looked at the status screen where it was written how much of which item he needed. It was easy to do it compared to Spear skill and he can upgrade it even quicker. He still felt like it's impossible since he can't even use mana yet, but Eartha knows he's evolving really well because of all the physical skills he's trained in. She thought to herself that when he gets mana, he'll become a being who can rule over all creation of the Akashic Record. And she wondered what kind of revolution he would cause as he grew stronger. She decided to not think about that for now. Ilhan and Eartha were eating breakfast that his mother left for them. On the TV, there was news that many damages were done two days ago where they fought the big leopard. Ilhan was surprised that there wasn't a corpse left and that they cleaned it up so quickly. Eartha said it might not be that. Reporter continued telling that the corpse of the monster disappeared together with people who were sharing the loot and that some are saying that a dungeon was opened and swallowed them all. Ilhan knew it couldn't be the dungeon, there must have been different monsters. Eartha said that the leopard was definitely dead, after all, they took its mana stone, and in 99.9% .9 the hunt is over in that case. Ilhan was curious about the 0.1%. Eartha explained that the percentage is for monsters that are pregnant and about to give birth, so it looks like the leopard was pregnant. He was angry as he knew it would be the one who finished the butchering that wouldn't have happened. Eartha consoled him that it's not his fault. The people were greedy, but that didn't make him feel better because among those people are also those who supported and trusted in him. The monster must have been mad at the end of the fight because she needed to hide the baby and they hadn't noticed the the baby because it had stealth to help him hide. Since the people have been fighting over who gets what for so long, the baby was born. Eartha said that since its stealth is so good, nobody noticed it. It must be a tertiary class monster. Ilhan believes he can defeat it, and since its stealth is so good, his other skills must not be. He must be careful and it won't be easy, but he can do it. He picked up his jacket to get ready to go make more equipment and defeat it as soon as possible so it won't do any damage if left alone. He stopped and thought that he could call for some help and searched for the business card he got from the Empress. Eartha asked him if he was really going to use his phone to make a call. Then he should make it even easier to make a public announcement that he is Sun Game Bolt. He stopped and agreed he didn't think it through. Using a public phone, he called the Empress to explain the situation to her. She agreed the situation is really dangerous. Ilhan was impressed how quickly the Empress caught on. 
She said she'll let the government and military know just in case. He went to his workshop to make more equipment. He made a harpoon out of the bones. Its purpose is to be thrown at the prey and pull it back so it's different to a spear. And he made some more things for a harpoon using Manacraft to put everything together. Of course, he's so good at it, with alpha and beta options again. And it was twice as strong as he expected. He was on public phone, giving last details on when and how they will meet. The baby is probably still at the scene to avenge its mother. And since he has high stealth, they have to be careful. The Empress asked him if she was driving there and if he had any plans. His plan was to deactivate the monster's stealth skill. She should just wait until that happens. Bertha confirmed the baby is still there and she doesn't think it noticed him yet, so his stealth must be better than the baby's. They noticed the transparent big leopard moving right next to them, so he took the attacking position with a harpoon in his hand. The monster was half of the size of the mother. It let out a roar. Ilhan took the opportunity of the monster not seeing him to attack with a harpoon. The monster roared in pain, and Ilhan put his mask on. The monster attacked him, but as it tried to run away, it was stopped by the rope. With the next swing with its paws, the monster emitted a pulse that destroyed his hand protectors. Luckily, it was in his hands. Monster's attacks were really fast and strong. Ilhan hit him with a harpoon again and again, binding it in place, not allowing it to bite off the ropes. The Empress arrived with a car and attacked it with lightning. She was impressed by how he got him so quickly and Ilhan praised her skills as well. But it's not enough as the monster started standing up again. Since it was cornered, it magnified its fighting strength like any other living thing. The two come up with a plan and Ilhan will keep it occupied while the Empress will charge up a strong attack. As the monster was about to free itself at the cost of great pain, Ilhan hit it in the eye with a gun he got from the Empress. Normally, that would be useless, but Yu Ilhan's shooting skills made the gun go above its limits, so it did a lot of damage. The Empress was finally ready to unleash a devastating attack, Triple Lightning. The Triple Light hit the monster, but the fight wasn't done yet. Leopard used stealth and hid from her, but that never worked on Ilhan. He tied up the monster before he finished it off. He offered the Empress to form a party. She gladly accepted. When they formed a party, he was impressed by all the information he could see. And the Empress asked him why he was acting as if he had never formed a party before. He lied that it's been a while. They finally killed the monster and Ilhan jumped from level 28 to 36 in one go. They both felt nauseous from all the experience they received in one go. He went to the monster corpse and started apologizing to the leather because of all the damage. Eartha was done with him. He noticed that the monster has mana stone in his head, and Eartha told him he's very lucky that both the baby and its mother had it. The stronger the monster, the lower the chance of obtaining a mana stone is. The Empress finally came to calculated the sharing ratio. She was very perceptive as she explained that Ilhan's butchering skill is currently indispensable as there is no use for monster hunting if one can't use its loot. His butchering skills are unmatched. If you want to see where evolution and God's power will take Earth and Ilhan, be sure to like and subscribe to not miss out on the next exciting episode of Crafting, Magic, and Monster Fighting.